Sorry to hit you guys with two smaller videos back to back, but we're working on something that's taking a lot out of me personally. More on that next time, hopefully. So I really needed something to take my mind off the gargantuan task at hand, and Spellbreak just so happened to get its full release recently. So let's go look at another free children's game. I'm normal! I actually don't remember which digital presentation I saw this one at, but it stayed with me and I have been a silent member of the Discord since. A battle royale with a bunch of spell-slinging battle mages. Alright, you've got my attention. Proletariat, the development team behind Spellbreak, have a few games under their belt. None that I'm familiar with, but Streamline looks like it could be fun. Their tagline is award-winning games that redefine the multiplayer experience. Hmm, well that is surely an interesting claim. And from the short descriptions of their titles on the website, I think I understand what they mean. An RPG that lets channel communities quest and build a guild together. A fast-paced third-person game built for and around streaming. Okay, I get it. Those all sound pretty neat, but now they've gone and created a free-to-play battle royale game. So does Spellbreak succeed in my eyes and as a game that redefines the multiplayer experience? Well, let's find out. If you've been with this channel for a while, you might remember a video we did in Season 1 outlining what we thought Battle Royales could be. This was back in 2017, however, when Fortnite and PUBG ruled the scene. Before Apex, before Warzone, and all those other countless additions to the growing game mode. One of my personal wishes for Battle Royales was for the movement options to be more exciting. I used Splatoon as an example, proposing how cool a large multiplayer match would be if all the players were able to zip underground, climb up walls, and shoot through the air. This is because Spellbreak has greatly increased movement than what we would see in our typical Battle Royale. You're able to ascend for a few seconds if the button is held after a jump. You can find boots that increase your base speed depending on its color of the typical color-coded rarity chart we've seen before. Runes can have several different means of transportation, whether that be a super jump with slow descent, a teleport for closing some distance, a short dash, or a long-lasting flight room that was my favorite. And the best method of travel, ice skating. No, I'm not kidding, this is f***ing perfect. All of these different means of travel make the game just fun to play. This added mobility adds a layer of strategy to the game, no longer making it exclusively how well you can place your shots, but also how effectively you can master your evasive maneuvers. And this is the kind of gameplay I live for when it comes to a multiplayer setting. Now, I say shots, but there are no guns in sight. Instead, we have magical gauntlets. There are only six types of weapons in the game, but they have far more use than your typical firearm. Each gauntlet is tied to an element. This includes its own specific rates of fire and a special move that's set on a cooldown after use. Each are distinct enough to make you think about which you want to start the match with. While the Ice Gauntlet acts as a high damage arrow projectile, the Fire Gauntlet will shoot explosive fireballs for a little splash damage, and the Stone Gauntlet dealt a lot of damage while being limited to ground targets. It was my go-to though. While you do start with a basic gauntlet of your choice on one hand, you can find any of the other elemental gauntlets strewn across the maps, taking your other hand's slot. And your choice in gauntlets are very important because special attacks can be combined to make dangerous hazards on the battlefield. Let's say for example you shoot a poison glob out and then summon a tornado on top of the targeted area. You just created an armor melting tornado that you and your enemies need to watch out for. But these combos can also be created by intercepting a special attack one of your opponents fired off. So it can be kind of dangerous to shoot them off willy-nilly around your teammates because the enemies can reverse them on you. And these attack combinations are for almost every imaginable pair of gauntlets. Now, I would say when I started playing the first two games or so, I cleaned house. I don't know if I got lucky or this game's player base is all this. 
See, they all have combos. Like, um, actually, it's supposed to be electricity, gas. No, what about wind? No, not wind, gas. That does those. Fire, gas. I want to see what that would be like. Just like, let me get fire. I landed. There's nothing. Wow. Or maybe on the other side, it's all this. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Ah! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I'm dead. Oh, there's two people outside here. Damn, I'm trash right now. No, oh, he's casting me! Dead boys. But later on, the matches did start getting a little tougher, and I would get pummeled if I wasn't careful. Figuring out what needed to be done or used to avoid damage from specific gauntlets is something I welcome, because you can just as easily outplay multiple teams if you have the skill for it. But I like a good learning curve, despite whether or not that's what the general audience is used to. Okay, purple lightning. There's a purple lightning for someone. I got, I got purple. I got purple lightning. Oh my oh. god! Trend. The game has a progression system that rewards you with different perks and buffs to your main gauntlets as you play through the match. Each time you enter a new circle, you'll unlock another passive buff for your gauntlet. There's also a progress bar for badges and other cosmetics as you increase your favorite gauntlet's rank in the menu. Yeah, of course, this game has a store that you can purchase cosmetics in for an in-game currency that can be acquired in large sums for real money, but I'm not mad because one, this game is free and has to make money somehow, and two, it's just fun to play. Yeah, it might be a little on the bear side right now content-wise, only offering one mode with squads is the only option. My only real gripes are small nitpicks, like the fact that there's no text chat, or that the ping markers are a little difficult to make out on the overworld. But these are all easy fixes, and I think the foundation is remarkably solid. Grayed out menu choices hint at more content and modes to come, so it can only get better from here. I'll probably stick around for a while, and that's new for me. I don't feel like I'm playing a gimped version of a better game like Apex, or it doesn't take up half my hard drive like Warzone. I think I'll be having a lot of fun with friends thanks to Spellbreak. And you should too. Again, it's completely free and available on everything from PC to Switch. All cross-play and all cross-save. It's a better deal than what Avengers is offering. Oh, yeah. I didn't plan on looking at that one, by the way. Kind of tangential, but definitely not my kind of game. I wouldn't have many nice things to say since it's such a shallow experience right now, but maybe I'll do a related video or whenever I care. I'll, I'll see what Elliot and Nick want to do. And I don't want to be too mean on something that has such a big installed fan base. <laughs> With all these hot takes I'm spewing, I feel like a butt. So don't be offended by my silly little opinions. If you aren't offended, I would recommend maybe watching some of my other content. It's pretty good. But anyway, I appreciate you for watching. So thanks for stopping by and have a great day.